of it. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place and came and looked and passed by, on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Thus far the scripture lesson, I want to speak to you this Lord's day for a few moments. From this thought, love is a verb. Love is a verb. God is love. Hallelujah. I said God is love. His will is always best. God is all known. His directions are always right. God is all powerful. He can enable you and I to accomplish his will. Will you do me a favor? Look at the person on the left and on the right and tell them God loves you. God loves you. I will never stop saying that because I have a deep conviction that people need the love of God. People need to know that God loves them. We continue in our journey together in the series Soul Healthy. We are at the point in our journey together where we are discovering how to partner with the Holy Spirit to live a fruited, character-filled life by allowing the fruit of the Spirit to manifest. We're almost to the conclusion of this series. I don't know about you, I've been richly blessed. How about you? I was reading earlier this week from the message translation, Galatians 5 and 22. Now I was so blessed, I wanted to share with you this morning from Galatians 5, 22, the message translation. Hear the words of the Lord. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. You and I have been called to live a life of compassion. And if you don't remember anything from this sermon, I want you to remember these two words. Love works. 
love works. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor love works. Tell the other neighbor, say love works. love works. You see, sympathy is something you feel. Compassion is something that you show. And everything God does happens as a result of his great love. God in his Trinitarian community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit moves out of love. And whenever you talk about love, you are talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the first thing we see, the presence of the Holy Spirit, is in Genesis 1. And when he says, God moved and moved upon the face of the waters, it was the presence of God showing his love to his creation. The apostle John tells us that God is love in 1 John 4 and 16. There is much meaning to this statement. Much more than we normally realize, my brothers and sisters. John is not saying that God, love, God loves or has love. He's saying that God is love. I opened this series of soul healthiness talking about love. And I come back today speaking to you about love. Because the very nature of God is love. In other words, love is the essence of who God is. Now, we know that God loves, but he loves because that's who he is. Love is his life. Love is his being. Love is his very existence. God is love. So this word of ours called love is a good way to describe the communal life of God himself. Now, love demands a relationship. And everything in God, in God's economy, in the kingdom of God, is centered around relationship. Because you have to understand that love must have an object. One separated individual cannot love. In fact, it is hard for an individual to even know who they are unless they're able to express themselves to another. Maybe that was the problem that God saw when he saw Adam and all that he had given Adam, yet Adam seemed alone and God said, uh, 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 this ain't good, I need to make him a helpmate. That individual cannot, cannot survive by himself. Everybody needs somebody. Amen. Oh, it's quiet this morning. My brothers and sisters, as, as powerful and wonderful you think you are all by yourself, you need somebody. You are not in this world alone. Amen. You've got to learn how to relate to one another. You've got to learn how to get along with people. Yeah. I know you think you God wonderful, but guess what? Somebody else is thinking the same thing. <laughs> God makes room yes. in his self-giving love for us to be more than we can imagine. My brothers and sisters, God's love is expansive. I want you to know that this is an incredible time in the kingdom for us. And perhaps all the stuff that's going on around you is pushing you to your God-defining moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many of you are being summoned to another level. Amen, Bishop. Another level of living, another level in your relationship, another level in your spiritual walk. God is calling you to another level. Amen, sir. Many of you are experiencing defining moments as God does a work on your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your experience has qualified you 
for this season of a greater identity to know yourself even more who God has called you to be a greater place of intimacy with the Father and for you to begin to experience what he has created for you God hallelujah is up to something I don't know if you feel it but, but anyone with any kind of spiritual intuition understands that God is up to something. Yeah. Something is different yes, in the atmosphere. Yeah. Something is shifting. Something is moving. God is up to something. And he's up to something good for you. I'm not worried about what's happening in the world crisis. But something is happening in the kingdom of God for his people. Touch your neighbors if something is happening. Tell neighbor something is happening for you. Say neighbor it's good. Tell neighbor it's real good. And if you really believe it, you ought to give God a praise. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't a real praise. That was a patty cake praise. But I need about 10 people that said, I've been to hell and back, and I got the t-shirt to prove it, but I know that God is up to something, and I'm not going to be denied of what my Father has in store for me. God's got something for me. But y'all scared to hear them. Look at y'all. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is I need you to get a revelation that God is up to something. And it's something great. It's something good. It's something that he promised in his word that he was blessed. Don't you dare give up in your warfare because of victory belongs to you. I heard God say to tell him this morning, don't give up in your warfare because the victory belongs to you. High five your name and say victory. Oh, come on, high five the other name and say victory. God is up to something. God is doing something tremendous in reforming his church. We are a different church. Not called to be like anybody else. Not better. Because when you start thinking like that, arrogance comes in. We're not better than anybody else. But we all call to be different. Yes, yes. We are an emerging ministry. Amen. And because of what God is doing. And because he's up to something. And he's up to something great. You and I. Must be close to his heart. You and I must remain. Close to the heart of God. Yes, sir. You and I must feel his heartbeat. Yes, sir. We are called. To be people of love. Called to love a people. We're called to usher people in. To purpose. With passion. To release the power of God. In their lives. We must continue. The word of our forefathers. Forefathers of faith. And usher in transformation. A transformation, not like the world is talking about transformation, but a transformation that is based in the regenerating work of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. That is key. Transformation is not a new word. It's not a new word to the church. It's new to society and in all of the other things of the world that are talking about transforming. But we know that real transformation is a work done by the Holy Spirit in the lives of a man, woman, boy, or girl. Yes. Amen, church. Yes. Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries, as I was praying this week for you, God called me to remind you boldly this morning that we are called to serve 
There's Eastern Panhandle. Amen. Western Maryland. South Central Pennsylvania. The northern tip of Virginia. And we must love the people of this region. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We must love the people of this region. Yes, sir. You're going to get it in a minute. I'm going to get you in a minute. Don't worry. Don't worry. When you fall in love with people or with a people group, God begins to do amazing things. There are people who are looking for you. There are people who are looking for a tribe that they can identify with. Amen. I can't get no help here now. People in the world are looking for a place of belonging. And the church must say, come try our tribe. It might be the right fit for you. Can't get no help here now. In fact, let's go a little further. The world is in need. Of fathers and mothers. Yes, sir. Yeah. It is a desperate need for the nurturing spirit to arise from the church of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's why God is raising many of you up. And we and you said, Bishop, he's raising me up. Yeah, and the first thing he's doing is trying to get you together. So you can walk in what he's called you to be. God is raising many of you to be fathers and mothers to a generation that is in need of nurturing and care. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This generation that people are giving up on, we cannot give up on them. We must nurture them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You cannot talk about them. You must teach them. Yes, sir. You can't put them down. You must lift them. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's not just for a few to be considered a father or a mother, but all of us must allow the nurturing spirit of Christ to arise and nurture people back to wholeness and health. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We must love well. Touch your neighbor, say love well. Love well. You and I are called to be a game changer. How does this happen? How do we allow the nurturing spirit to arise to men and women, boys and girls who are in trouble and, 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 and some of them don't even realize how bad a trouble they're in. How does this happen? We are an apostolic and prophetic house. We are an apostolic house. We follow and we, we set the order. We establish the order. Yes, sir. We decree and walk in the order. Yes, sir. And we are a prophetic house. Meaning that we declare the truth. And we not just for a few. But everyone in the pew understands. And I'm going to deal with that in a few weeks. Are called to prophesy. And he commands us to speak the word of the Lord. Amen, you sir. don't need a title to prophesy. Amen. You don't need a call to prophesy. But you do need to open up your mouth and declare the word of the Lord. And not just up in these whole walls. But I'm believing that you be so anointed that when you leave here, when you're walking down the street, when you're in the grocery store, when you're on your job, God will give you a word to speak to a man, woman, boy, or girl. And that will cause deliverance to come to them. I wish I had a real church. Thank you today. I need a real church. To believe that God wants to use you to reclaim this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor. Say God's going to use you to reclaim this world. Say you're ready to open up your mouth and use your heart to bless somebody else. We, how do we enculturate? That is the process whereby individuals learn their group's culture, people, into an apostolic environment. How do we accelerate the prophetic? What is the nature? How do we do it? Very simple. We fall in love with Jesus 
and we start loving people. Come on, sir. Come on. You see, while people are doing all these crazy stuff and calling it God, get back to the scriptures. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And allow the scriptures to invigorate your spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And allow you to love men and women, boys and girls. And speak the word of truth to them. You see, while we may be committed to Jesus, while we may believe the message of the gospel, if we are honest with ourselves, we got some pretty serious struggles ourselves. Many struggle with living the kind of life that we see portrayed in the scriptures. We feel pushed back and forth by our circumstances. Or sometimes we feel that God is distant. And we begin to realize our faith consists more of a set of ideas rather than a real relationship with God. And when we bump into opportunities to share what God has given us, we often do not know how. Wow, wow. I would like to challenge every one of you under the sound of my voice this morning with all of the anointing within me to do a reality check. Is this where you are? How satisfied are you with your Christian experience? Does it satisfy you or do you feel like you are just going through the motions? Do you feel content or frustrated? Both of them are a problem. Because you, if you are content that you become stagnant, the next thing will be you will be stinking. Because stagnant water will stink. Are you fulfilled or lacking? Now, 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 don't get religious on Bishop. That's not what I'm here for this morning. Is your faith everything to you that it seems like it should be? What if I told you that just maybe, just maybe, maybe it is highly possible that some of the feelings that you feel might be the Holy Spirit inside of you trying to move you to the place of more. Amen, sir. What if I told you the, 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 the frustration, the, the, the struggle does not mean you need to find a new church? Help us, sir. Help us. Does not mean you need to find a new prayer partner? Come on, sir. It may mean that you need to pray yourself. I'm trying to be good, but y'all won't let me. Could it be possible that you don't need to know your primary or your secondary calling or gift? Maybe you just need to fall in love with Jesus. Maybe you don't need to worry about whether I speak in tongues or not right now. You just need to love him. You don't need to worry about your title or your position in the church. You just need to love him. Yes, sir. You don't need to worry about whether somebody likes you or not because trust me, more people like you than don't. Come on, sir. Come on. <laughs> Maybe you just need to love him. See, my brothers and sisters, the good news is, and I know I'm busting some stuff up because I yes, feel a pull yes, back in the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The good news is about more than just being forgiven and going to heaven. In fact, being saved has just as much to do with who you are as it does with how good you think you are. You see, I am no longer looking for who I am. I am who God made me to be. And I do not have to prove that to anyone. Touch your neighbor say, I know I'm saved. Now, if you don't know you're saved, just say, hey, 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 hey. We're going to help you in a minute. We're going to help you in a minute. But if you love your saints, say, neighbor, I know I'm saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And see, when, I, when you know that you're saved, God, that means God has eradicated everything in my being that fell at the fall. Yes, 
That means I am no longer defined by Adam's mistakes. I am defined by the success of Jesus. And Jesus is far more successful because he went to Calvary's cross and he secured my salvation and my place in the kingdom. And I know that I'm saved and I'm delivered and I'm free. Touch your neighbor and say, I know I'm saved. Say, I know if I don't know anything else, I know I'm saved. Touch your neighbor and say, I know Jesus died on the cross for me. And I know I'm saved. And I might not be acting like it this morning, but I'm going to get it together and I'm going to praise him because I'm saved. Don't push me yet. I got to work on them. How many they're going to get caught up in the music? I want them to shout out the word. I need people to say, if there is no organ player, I know I'm saved. If there is no cheerleader, I know I'm saved. If there's nobody on my side, Jesus died for me, gave himself for me, and that's enough. Everybody's going to heaven. But it does mean God has his arms open to welcome everyone who wants to come. God is not angry with unbelievers. Instead, he's watching for them to come on home. Y'all don't hear me. Don't you dare get upset over family members that ain't come in yet. Because I want you to know they can come on in. In fact, I'm believing that the greatest move of God is getting ready to happen in your family. And I'm believing for generational salvation to happen to all of your children, your cousins, your mother's cousin, your father's cousin, cousin Susu, cousin Mackie, cousin Frida, Boo Jack, all of them. I want them all come on in. Guess what? God's open the door and he's saying, come on, come on. And guess what? The Holy Ghost is empowering you with a message that will say, it's your time to come on in. Do I have any believers that like to be that? I'm telling you, in the next three years, there will be the greatest harvest that's ever we've ever seen in the kingdom of God. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost revival that's on the horizon like we've never seen before. Touch your name and say, I'm excited. Then do you believe that God's going to do it? I'm telling you, men and women, boys and girls are going to come into the kingdom like you've never seen. People that you thought would never get saved gonna get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Gonna be a tongue talking, devil chasing individual. And I want you right now. I dare you start praising God right now for the soul that's been ready to come on in. Oh, I don't have a real church. I'm praising. I'm praying for about 20 people that I saw in the grocery store last week that's getting ready to come on in. Well, how would you touch your neighbor? Say, neighbor, they're coming in. Say, neighbor, I agree with you. No, oh, I feel it in the spirit. Take your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I agree with you. That everybody attached to you will come into the kingdom in this season. Now, if you believe it, seal it with a prayer. Oh, I need some radical praise. Because praise puts the devil on the notice that we mean what we say. 
bring them in now, God. I'm believing for people to have a divine encounter with God that will rock their world and call them to know that he is God all by himself. Give me a favor. Last time you need to talk to your neighbor, tell your neighbor this. With all the anointing you got, say it's getting ready to happen. Grab them by the hand and say, neighbor, it's getting ready to happen. Find another neighbor and say, oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. it's getting ready to happen. Then do me a favor, find one other neighbor and say, oh neighbor, receive the Holy Ghost to be a part of this end time harvest. If you believe it now, throw both your hands up in the air. And say, God use me as a vessel in this end time harvest. If you want to be used, give God the greatest praise you've given him all morning. It's getting ready to happen. I said it's getting ready to happen. Oh, I see it, I see it, I feel it. It's getting ready to happen. I'm, you know why I'm feeling it's getting ready to happen? Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen, so God's got to heal me. So I can make it happen. So I can be a vessel he can use. Not only is he going to heal me, he going to heal you. Not only is he going to heal me and you, he going to bless you and I. Because he's going to use your testimony to bring men and women, boys and girls in. If you believe it, just give him a great praise. I'm trying to move on to my text, but I feel like I gotta stir it in here. Some of you need to get stirred and get your witness back. Some of you need to get your fire back. Touch your neighbor and get your fire back. Do me a favor, talk to him. I told you with him. I really need you to provoke your neighbor. Pro make them mad or make them glad. I don't even care this morning. But ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have some fire? Get an answer. Say, neighbor, you got fire? Say, neighbor, you got fire? Because I got fire. And it's time that we connect. The fire starts fire. Hallelujah! It's getting ready to happen. And this is why. You cannot give in to what the enemy's trying to do to you and in your life. Focus on more of God's blessing than what the enemy's trying to do. Because when you can focus more on God than what the enemy's trying to do, you just defeat him every time. Look at the text so you don't think I'm crazy. Because I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't know your pastor was crazy. I told you this morning I'm crazy. I lost my mind. I lost my mind for Jesus a long time ago. Hallelujah. And they're just getting ready to get me out the crazy house. Hallelujah. They let me out long enough to preach. Hallelujah. And I got to go back. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I might be telling you the truth. Yes, I am. I'm just as crazy as the back. But listen to the text. Listen to the text. You know why I'm crazy? Because more and more every day, I believe this book. Not only do I believe this book, I'm crazy enough to live this book. And I'm crazy enough to expect what this book says to happen in your life. I'm crazy enough to believe it. Thank you, Sydney. I think I got, I'm glad I got one more person that's going to the crazy house with me. You going? Do I have anybody else crazy enough to believe God's word? That you don't have to settle for second best? That you don't have to remain busted and disgusted? That you don't have to remain sick or tormented by the enemy? Because God has given you the victory and it belongs to you right now. When Jesus in the text 
ministering to the 70. Young lawyer stood up. A certain lawyer stood up and he tested Jesus. Saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him and said, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Because this young man was a lawyer. Absolutely. He was well acquainted with the Torah. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, what does it say? And not only tell me what it says, give me your interpretation. The lawyer answers to Jesus and says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says, You've said well, and if you do this, you're going to live. But the lawyer wanting to justify himself where he was, he asked Jesus a question. Who is my neighbor? So Jesus answers him with a story. And Jesus said there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, he bet, who fell among thieves. And they stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and left him for half dead. Let's look at the text. A certain man was on his way from one place to another. And in the middle of his journey, he got hit by robbers. The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. He left him for half dead. How many people in the streets of Charlestown has the devil left for half dead? Wow, wow, wow. They're trying to do the best they can, trying to go somewhere, but they've been hit by the enemy and don't even know what hit them. And then here comes the church people. First, here comes the priest. Come down, I see you. I'm blessed and highly favored. God is good all the time. Mm. I got going on the side. Because that don't go with my spirit. Help us, sir. Help us. I can't deal with that. Come down, I see you. God is good. Priest. Leave him half dead. The priest who carried the presence of God. The priest who carried the anointing of God. Leave him half dead. Here comes the Levite, another church person. I'm just blessing God for what he's doing in my life. I have the gift of prophecy. I lay hands on the sick and they are healed. Hallelujah. I got faith. I'm a major prophet. I don't know what that is. But people taking those titles that ain't even in the Bible. I believe I go. Oh, I, I, I'm not dealing with that today. I'm consecrating. Help us, sir. Help us, sir. And the church comes to a house of God carrying the presence and leave people half dead. The text is an indictment against you and I. Yes, sir. Because all of us carry the presence of God. Yes, sir. All of us as a child of God have received the power of God and we didn't stop to help them. Wow. Wow. How many people you pass by you know that strung out on drugs? Come on, sir. How many people that you see that are struggling in their families, their children are suffering? They're suffering in their marriages, and you pass them by. Wow, sir. wow, wow. Why? Because to you, love is a noun. Wow, wow. And not a verb. Come on. 
You've identified love as a person, place, or thing. So that means you gotta be with somebody or you gotta go to a place to feel that you love. That's a whole nother sermon. You gotta stay the course. Help me, Holy Ghost. And that's where many people are messed up now because they think love is in a body. Help us, help us, sir. Help us. And the love ain't in a body. Hallelujah. Love is action. Love is movement. Yes, sir. A man can tell a woman that he loves her every day. Uh -huh. But if there is no gesture of affection, yes, sir. Come on, sir. she will still question the love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sisters, you should help me. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sister Edmonds. If that man said, oh, you know I love you. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I know you love me. Mm -hmm. But the day he come home with a happy meal and an apple pie, you be like, oh! Why? Because it's a gesture of affection. You showed me you love me by your action and not just by your words. Are you guys hearing me? Brothers, if you want to, you really want to make your wife happy, show her that you love her. Don't just tell her. She ought to know her love. She riding in the car, people. Keep the food on the table. Yeah, and you supposed to do that. If you didn't want to do that, you shouldn't have put a ring on it. But it's more than just that. Yeah. You gotta let her know that you love. You gotta cause her to be so secure in your love. That means that whatever she needs, whatever she desires, she shouldn't have to look for nobody else to do it but you. When you can do that, then she can call you big daddy. When you ain't doing that, you ain't no big papa, you a little hot. I know I'm dating myself, you know, but that's all right. Y'all got it, y'all got it. Sisters, it's likewise. I ain't gonna forget y'all. I ain't gonna leave you out there, brothers. I ain't gonna leave you out there. Sisters, it's the same way. He don't do this, he don't do that, he don't do this. When is the last time you cooked him a good meal? When the last time you pressed the shirt? When the last time you rubbed his hand and said, baby, I love you? Can't get no help here now. Because love is a verb. And you done made it just a noun. Come on, this Likewise, believers have to walk and showing love. So the priest and the Levi passed the man who needed the most. Come on, sir. Come on. And then here comes the Samaritan. A half breed. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on. One who's considered from the other side of the tracks. Come on, sir. He shouldn't even be used. Come on, sir. Wow, wow. Go back a couple chapters in John chapter 4 when Jesus met the woman who was sitting on the well and she said to him, you know Samaritans don't have no dealings with the Jews. Y'all think we are less than. Uh -huh. Wow, wow. But the Samaritan, the one who people wrote off, yes. was the one who stopped, yes. healed his wound, put him on his animal. Took him to the innkeeper and said, here, take this and take care of him. And anything else you have, he runs up, I'll pay it when I come back. And so Jesus stops and says, wait a minute. 
Which one of these? Showed mercy. Which one of these is the greatest? The priests who say they anointed but don't show love? Come on, sir. The Levite who say they got power with God but don't show it to someone who needs it? <coughs> or the Samaritan who does it without looking for anything in return? You see, because one of the problems that we deal with in church is there are some people who will do it, but then they got to tell everybody that they've yes. done it. Come on, sir. I help someone, someone, I help someone, someone, I help someone. You ain't do it from a heart. You did it because you needed to feel good yourself. Come on, sir. I can't get no help here now. Oh, this Samaritan. And the lawyer said, the one who shows mercy, the Samaritan. And see, it's not about how much you do. It's that you did what was needed. Amen. Amen. And so God is calling the church as I bring this to a close and I preach 10 minutes too long and y'all made me do that. <laughs> He's calling this house to a greater level of love that we will show love and that we will have compassion. Charlestown is full of people who need the love of God. Amen. The Eastern Panhandle, Western Maryland, South Central Pennsylvania, the Northern tip of Virginia are full. Of, there are hundreds of people who need Jesus. And he's calling you and I to extend the love. I close this message just in case you need to know. God loves you. Amen. And not only does God love you, I love you. Amen. I love you. And I thank God for you. And I believe that God wants to bless you Amen. and your family. And he has something great in store for you. Everybody stand.